Hello, chemistry students. Your tutor, Jake, here. And today we have this organic chemistry HNMR question. How many types of non-equivalent protons are present in each of the following molecules? When we're trying to determine non-equivalent protons, we have to think which of these are actually going to be unique meaning which of these chemical environments are going to now be special now or different than any of the other hydrogens that we have in other chemical environments. And so let's take A. In this particular case, we have this carbon right here that's connected to two of these CH3s. Well, in this particular case, these two CH3s would be equivalent because what we can do is we can now slice this down the middle and we've got symmetry. Whenever you have some kind of symmetry element like that, that means that these are going to have the same now chemical sort of signature in the HNMR spectra. So this would now give me one for all six of these hydrogens. And when you're first starting out, go ahead and draw in all of the hydrogens. Sometimes that's really, really useful in helping you figure out whether or not we have that plane of symmetry to make these hydrogens unique or not, okay? Now, when I'm looking at this structure, that now symmetry element that I talked about earlier is going to now dictate how the rest of these are going to actually be able to give these signatures in these spectra as well. These hydrogens all right here are all going to be the same signature. Do you see how we've got now this split down the middle of this molecule, meaning that these two CH3s that we have on our ring, all right, are going to now essentially both be one, two carbons away from the hydrogens that are attached to these carbons, right? Now, so that gives us two. Now, again, moving forward, we see that now going from those CH3s, the CH2 that we have going down the ring is also going to now give us these four protons having the exact same now signature in the HNMR spectra. And then here at the bottom, we have these two hydrogens that are going to now be, again, equivalent. Because we have that plane of symmetry going down the middle, these hydrogens are going to essentially be sliced exactly in half if we cut this molecule in half. And now that would mean that these are going to have the same HNMR signature. Let's move on to B. When we're looking at B now, we have something where we have the CH3, CH2, CH2O, CH3. When I'm looking at this, the first thing that sticks out to me is we've got this oxygen. And right next door to the oxygen, we have a CH3 and a CH2. Well, if we have something where we have a chain of carbons versus just one single carbon, well, that's going to now be one distinct signature right here, and we'll have a second one on the other side. And now as we go away from that oxygen, our carbons are going to now have a different effect or feel a different inductive pull from that oxygen. So what that means is that each of the hydrogens attached to each of these carbons successively is going to have a different proton signature. All right, let's take C. Now, naphthalene is a little bit special. So in this particular case, when we're looking at naphthalene, we have to think about all the different ways that we could sort of think about the symmetry elements. We could potentially slice naphthalene longwise this way and have symmetrical elements. Now, also though, we could slice naphthalene going this way and also have symmetrical elements. Well, if I sort of take this center piece as my starting point, if you will, when I'm thinking about this, now what I have to consider is how many hydrogens or how many carbons do we have going away from that? And in this particular case, we actually only are going to have two hydrogens, this hydrogen right here and this hydrogen right here. Think about folding this like a napkin. We could fold it this way and we could fold it this way. So in this particular case, these two hydrogens are going to be the only two that are going to give different chemical signatures. All right. So now moving on to D. So styrene is a little bit interesting. What we have to think about when we have this now phenyl ring coming off of this carbon right here, 
is how could we actually think about slicing and dicing this so that we've got mirror planes? And one of the things that you could consider is what if we had our styrene flat like this, right? Or our phenyl group on our styrene like this, and then that carbon with the alkene sort of sticking up like this. Well, what we could then do is now flipping it this way is slice that phenyl ring in half. So what we see is that this hydrogen right here is going to be equivalent to this hydrogen right here. This hydrogen right here is going to be equivalent to now this hydrogen over here. And this last hydrogen is going to have a chemical signature all to itself, being furthest away from the arrow pointed carbon. So that being now said, we have more hydrogens to think about. Well, we have the central carbon right here that has a hydrogen and the CH2. The CH2 now is again going to be something where, is this now something where we have to consider, oop, let's draw it like this, dun, 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 and like this. Well, where in space are these? One of the things that you may do immediately is just assume, oh, well, this is a CH2. That means that these have to be symmetric. That may not necessarily be the case. For instance, when we have this hydrogen and this hydrogen right next door to each other, well, that's actually going to be a different range than the hydrogen that we have over here. Right? In addition, we have now our bottom hydrogen, if you will, that's going to now be cis to the aromatic ring versus the hydrogen that's going to be trans to the aromatic ring. So in this particular case, we have to be a little bit careful because now what we've got is one, two, three, and then we're going to count this as four. And remember the one above is symmetric, five, six different hydrogen signatures. Now that may give you a big hint as to the next one that we have here for ethyl acrylate. So for ethyl acrylate, we have something very similar going on where we have this double bond conundrum. Whenever we have a double bond, it's important to look at the symmetry elements that we have embedded in the actual molecule. Well, in this case, again, we have that CH2, but they spread it out for us. So it's a little bit easier to see. Now what I see is that we've got this hydrogen that's cis to this now other functional group over here or moiety. And we have our hydrogen that's going to now be cis to another hydrogen. So that means that these are going to have different HNMR signatures. Okay. So counting through, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five different chemical signatures for our HNMR. Okay. So this is how you're going to figure out what the types of non-equivalent protons are. You're going to have to look at what are the symmetry elements that we have embedded in the molecule, and then how is the magnet actually going to look at this structure, okay? I hope that this gives you a good strategy for figuring out non-equivalent protons for your HNMR spectra. This is your tutor, Jake. Be sure to like and subscribe as it will help my algorithm out a lot. And make sure that you comment below. If you have any questions about HNMR or any other questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll see you next time.